Hello from American Losses today, and welcome back to our channel. In the past few days, we have received somber news about the passing of extraordinary talents. Today's episode is dedicated to honoring their memory. Additionally, we will recap the stars whom we have recently lost. Before we begin, we kindly ask for your support. If this video or the legacies of these remarkable individuals have touched your life, please consider giving this video a thumbs up as a sign of respect and remembrance. Thank you. Jacoby Rashid Jones, July 11, 1984, July 14, 2024, was an American football wide receiver and return specialist in the NFL. Drafted in the third round of the 2007 NFL Draft by the Houston Texans, he also played for the Baltimore Ravens, San Diego Chargers, and Pittsburgh Steelers, later joining the Monterey Steel of the National Arena League. Jones played college football at Lane College and was with the Texans from 2007 to 2011. With the Ravens from 2012 to 2014, he was a Pro Bowl selection in 2012. He is best remembered for his 70-yard touchdown catch in the AFC Divisional Playoff game and a 108-yard kickoff return in Super Bowl X Sweven, the longest play in Super Bowl history. At the time of his death, Jones was the wide receivers coach at Alabama State University. He lived in New Orleans East and attended St. Augustine and Marion Abramson High Schools in New Orleans. His childhood home and high school were destroyed by Hurricane Katrina. Shannon Maria Doherty, Doherty, April 12, 1971, July 13, 2024, was an American actress known for her roles in television and film. She portrayed Jenny Wilder in Little House on the Prairie, 1982 to 1983, Heather Duke in Heathers, 1989, Brenda Walsh in Beverly Hills, 9210, 1990 and 1994, 2008-2009, 2019, and Prue Halliwell in Charmed, 1998 to 2001. Born in Memphis, Tennessee to Tom and Rosa Doherty, she was raised in her mother's Southern Baptist faith and was of Irish and Native American descent. Doherty was briefly engaged to Dean J. Factor in 1993, married and divorced actor Ashley Hamilton in 1993 to 1994, and had a short-lived marriage to Rick Salomon in 2002. In 2011, she married photographer Kurt Iswarienko, but they began divorce proceedings in April 2023, which were finalized shortly before her death. In November 2018, she lost her house to the Woolsey Fire. Despite her tumultuous personal life, Doherty remained a beloved figure in the entertainment industry. James Barry Sicking, March 5, 1934, July 13, 2024, was an American actor best known for his role as Latoured Howard Hunter on the 1980s television series Hill Street Blues. Sicking also starred as Dr. David Hauser on the ABC series Doogie Hauser, M.D., and as Captain Stan Jonas on the 1997 drama series Brooklyn South. His film work includes The Competition, Outland, Star Trek III, The Search for Spock, Narrow Margin, and Point Blank. He began his film career in 1955 and starred in the 1992 television movie Doing Time on Maple Drive. Sicking made guest appearances on numerous television series, including Perry Mason, The Fugitive, Bonanza, and The Rockford Files. He married cookbook author Florine Kaplan in 1962, and they had three children. Sicking died of complications from dementia at his home in Los Angeles on July 13, 2024, at the age of 90. Milton Teagle Richard Simmons July 12, 1948, July 13, 2024, was an American fitness personality known for promoting weight loss programs, most famously through his Sweating to the Oldies line of aerobics videos. Simmons began his career by opening his gym, Slimmons, in Beverly Hills, California, which catered to the overweight. He gained widespread recognition through television appearances and his popular consumer products. Simmons was often parodied and frequently appeared on late-night television and radio talk shows, such as The Late Show with David Letterman and The Howard Stern Show. Throughout his decades-long career, he continued to advocate for health and exercise and later engaged in political activism, including supporting a 2008 bill for non-competitive physical education in public schools. Simmons died on July 13, 2024, 
at his home in Hollywood Hills from natural causes at the age of 76. Gregory James Sparks, June 10, 1952, July 13, 2024, known professionally as Ronnie Spark. Known for his interviews with celebrities and diverse music programming, Sparks provided iconic voiceovers for Wheel of Fortune and hosted Countdown Special Editions. His career included roles as program director at 2UW and positions at Triple M and Two Day FM, where he left due to corporate frustrations. He later found success at Nova 96.9 and WSFM, retiring in 2017 after almost 16 years. Sparks was also the enduring voice of 2CA for three decades. He lived in Camaray, Sydney with his wife and two sons. Sparks passed away on July 13, 2024 at the age of 72, leaving behind a lasting impact on Australian broadcasting. Claudio Reyes, May 5, 1960, July 13, 2024, was a revered Chilean entertainer known for his talents in singing, acting, comedy, and public service. He gained initial fame with the hit Por Que Llora La Tarde and became a household name through his roles on Japanese Con, where he created beloved characters like El Waso Clemente and Charlie Badalake. In addition to his entertainment career, Reyes served as a counselor for Puente Alto from 2004 to 2008, representing the Independent Democratic Union, UDI. He remained active in media, contributing as a guest panelist on De Aquino Sale and participating in Gato Por Libre on Radio Agricultura. Reyes's unexpected passing at age 64, following a heart attack during a friend's birthday celebration, marked the end of a distinguished career that profoundly impacted Chilean society through humor, artistry, and civic engagement. Carola Ruth Westheimer, nay Siegel, June 4, 1928, July 12, 2024, known as Dr. Ruth, was a pioneering German-American sex therapist and media personality. Born into a Jewish family in Germany, she escaped to Switzerland during the Nazi era, tragically losing her parents to the Holocaust. After serving in the Haganah in Palestine, she studied psychology in Paris and eventually settled in the United States. In the 1980s and 1990s, Dr. Ruth gained fame with her radio show Sexually Speaking and TV program The Dr. Ruth Show, where she provided straightforward yet compassionate advice on sexual issues. She authored 45 books on sex education, became a cultural icon, and received accolades including the Ellis Island Medal of Honor and the Magnus Hirschfeld Medal. Her life was celebrated in the play Becoming Dr. Ruth and the documentary Ask Dr. Bao. Ruth, highlighting her lasting impact on sexual health education globally. Tupini Labailu Baba, 14th of June 1942 to 14th of July 2024, was a distinguished Fijian academic and politician known for his significant contributions in both realms. A founding member of the Fiji Labor Party, he served as a cabinet minister under Prime Minister Timotsi Bavadra until the 1987 coup d'etat. Subsequently, he held key roles including Deputy Prime Minister under Mahendra Chaudhry until the 2000 coup. Baba's academic career began at the University of the South Pacific, where he later served as registrar, emphasizing his commitment to education. He pursued further studies, earning a master's degree in education from the University of Sydney and a PhD from Macquarie University, where he critiqued colonial-era organizations like the South Pacific Commission. Baba's passing on the 14th of July, 2024, marked the end of an era, leaving behind a legacy of scholarly insight and political dedication in Fiji. Sergio de Oliveira Cabral Santos, 27 May 1937, 14th of July, 2024, was a prominent Brazilian journalist, writer, composer, and political figure. Born in Rio de Janeiro, he began his career as a political reporter and later became the political editor of Ultima Hora. He co-founded the influential satirical newspaper O Pequim during Brazil's military dictatorship, for which he was briefly imprisoned. Cabral also made significant contributions to music, collaborating as a lyricist with composer Rildo Hora on several notable songs. In addition to his journalistic and musical pursuits, Cabral served three terms as a city councilman in Rio de Janeiro from 1983 to 1993. He was later appointed as an advisor to the Municipal Tribunal de Contas. 
a fixture in Rio's carnival scene. He was known for his strict judging on TV Globo's Samba School competitions and his commentary on carnival broadcasts. Cabral authored biographies of prominent samba musicians and received the Order of Rio Branco in 2014. Sylvain Saudin, 23rd of September 1936, 14th of July 2024, was a Swiss extreme skier renowned as the skier of the impossible. Raised near Verbier in Valais, Switzerland, he became a skiing instructor and high mountain guide in the early 1960s. By 1967, Sauden had gained fame for his mastery of extreme skiing, achieving 23 first descents, including some of the most challenging slopes worldwide. His crowning achievement came in 1982 when, at 46 years old, he skied down Pakistan's Gashur Bramwai, a 26,470-foot, 8,070 meters peak in the Himalayas, setting a record for the longest 50-degree ski descent and possibly the first full descent of an 8,000-meter mountain. This feat earned him a place in the Guinness Book of World Records. Sodden also founded Himalaya Hiliski in 1972 and survived a helicopter crash in Kashmir in 2007. He was instrumental in developing heli-skiing and designed specialized skis for powder snow. He passed away on the 14th of July, 2024, at the age of 87. Antonia Tonka Johanna Dracht, 12th November, 1930 to 12th of July, 2024, was a distinguished Dutch writer and illustrator renowned for her contributions to children's literature. Her book, De Brief for de Koning, was celebrated as the best Dutch youth book of the latter half of the 20th century. Dracht's works often blend fantasy or science fiction with real-world elements, with notable titles such as Geheimen van het Wilde Woud, De Torens van Februari, and De Zevensprong. Her stories typically feature male protagonists on personal quests, exploring themes of self-discovery. Dracht's writing broke from the norm in Dutch children's literature, moving away from realistic settings to incorporate historical fantasy and science fiction. Influenced by her childhood in Batavia and the Middle Ages, her stories include exotic locales and historical elements, as seen in Verhollen van de Tweeling Brewers. Drag's unique style and themes paved the way for a new era in Dutch children's literature. She passed away in The Hague on the 12th of July, 2024, at the age of 93. Evan Allen Wright, December 28, 1964, July 12, 2024, was an American writer celebrated for his insightful reporting on subcultures, notably for Rolling Stone and Vanity Fair. Best known for Generation Kill, 2004, a compelling narrative on the Iraq War and How to Get Away with Murder in America, 2012, an expose on a CIA officer linked to organized crime. Raised in Willoughby, Ohio, Wright's early career involved interviews for small magazines before gaining prominence with major publications. Influenced by Mark Twain and Christopher Isherwood, his writing style was noted for its nuanced military reporting and use of gallows humor. Wright tragically died by suicide on July 12, 2024, at age 59. His work often sparked controversy, particularly his critiques of military policies and creative writing programs. His legacy endures through his impactful journalism, which explored societal issues and subcultural phenomena with depth and insight. Abel B. Sarmientos, 22nd of July, 1962, to 12th of July, 2024, was a celebrated Cuban volleyball player who represented his country at the highest levels of international competition. He was a key member of the Cuban men's national volleyball team during the 1990 FIVB World Championship in Brazil, where they clinched the silver medal. Sarmientos also competed at the 1992 Summer Olympics in Barcelona, Spain, showcasing his skill and dedication on the global stage. Born on 22nd of July, 1962, Sarmientos hailed from a family deeply involved in volleyball, with his older brother, Victoriano, also achieving prominence in the sport. Abel Sarmientos' contributions to Cuban volleyball were marked by his athleticism and strategic prowess, earning him respect both nationally and internationally. Tragically, Abel Sarmientos passed away on the 12th of July, 2024 in Havana, leaving behind a lasting legacy as a talented athlete and a representative of Cuban sports excellence. William John Viola Jr., January 25, 1951, July 12, 2024, was an American video artist known for pioneering works that integrated electronic, sound, and image technology in new media. 
His art explored profound human experiences like birth, death, and consciousness. Viola grew up in Queens and Westbury, New York, and developed a fascination with visual storytelling early in life. He graduated from Syracuse University in 1973 with a Bachelor of Fine Arts in Experimental Studies, where he was involved in pioneering programs like Synapse. Viola's career spanned decades, earning international acclaim for his installations and video works that often blurred the boundaries between art and technology. He passed away from complications of Alzheimer's disease at his home in Long Beach, California at the age of 73, leaving behind a legacy of innovative art and exploration of existential themes. Dorothy Lichtenstein, born Dorothy Herzka, October 26, 1939, July 4, 2024, was a prominent American philanthropist known for her significant contributions to the arts. Born in New York City, she attended Beaver College before dedicating herself to supporting cultural initiatives. Lichtenstein served as the president of the Roy Lichtenstein Foundation from 1999 until her passing in 2024, playing a crucial role in preserving and promoting her husband's artistic legacy. Her impact extended beyond the foundation, influencing arts education and cultural preservation globally. Lichtenstein's dedication to fostering creativity and supporting contemporary art earned her widespread admiration and gratitude within the artistic community. Her passing at her home in Southampton, New York, marked the end of a life dedicated to enriching society through philanthropy and the arts, leaving behind a lasting legacy of cultural enrichment and artistic advocacy. Juan Ricardo Faccio Porta, 8th of December 1936 to 15th of July 2024, was a revered Uruguayan football player and manager. He began his career as a defender with Club Nacional de Football in the late 1950s, later playing for CA Phoenix, River Plate de Montevideo, and Liverpool de Montevideo. After retiring from playing, Faccio transitioned to football management and sports journalism. He notably managed CA, Peñarol, and the El Salvador national team, followed by stints with clubs in Mexico and Colombia. Faccio's family had a strong footballing pedigree. His father, Ricardo Faccio, and two uncles, Abdon Porte and Roberto Porta, were also Uruguayan international footballers. Known for his tactical acumen and leadership on the field, Faccio made a significant impact both as a player and a manager in South American and Central American football. His death at the age of 87 marked the end of a storied career dedicated to the sport he loved. Modesto Roma Jr., 5th December 1952 to 14th July 2024, was a prominent Brazilian businessman in the communications sector and served as the president of Santos FC from 2015 to 2017. Born in Santos, Sao Paulo, he initially pursued journalism before transitioning into business. Roma played a pivotal role as a Santos FC director from 2004, later becoming president during a period of financial instability for the club. During his presidency, Roma navigated challenges including unpaid player wages and financial restructuring, yet managed to lead Santos FC to victory in the Campeonato Paulista and a runner-up position in the Copa do Brasil in 2015. He introduced innovative initiatives like a reserve team to enhance player development pathways. Despite early successes, Roma faced criticism for financial decisions and management practices, leading to his resignation in 2017. His tenure left a complex legacy, marked by both achievements and controversies. Modesto Roma Jr. passed away on the 14th of July 2024 at the age of 71, leaving behind an indelible impact on Santos FC and Brazilian football administration. Ingrida Latimira, formerly Ingrida Udre, 14th of November 1958 to 13th of July 2024, was a Latvian politician known for her roles as a professional basketball player and later as an accountant before entering politics. She began her political career with the new party, gaining a seat in the Latvian parliament, Saima, in 1998. Udre later joined the Latvian Farmers Union, becoming the leader of the Union of Greens and Farmers in 2002. From 2002 to 2006, she served as the Speaker of the Saima, where her leadership was marked by notable legislative contributions and strategic initiatives. Her nomination for Latvia's European Commission seat in 2004 sparked controversy, leading to its withdrawal amidst scrutiny over campaign finance issues. 
Despite facing opposition in subsequent elections, Udre's legacy includes significant contributions to Latvian politics and parliamentary affairs, influencing the landscape of governance during her tenure. Romildo Magalhães da Silva, 9 April 1946 to 14 of July 2024, was a Brazilian politician who served as the governor of Acre from 1991 to 1992, stepping into the role after the assassination of Governor Edmundo Pinto. Previously, he had held the position of mayor of Feijó, with terms from 1978 to 1982 and again from 1997 to 2000, demonstrating his long-standing commitment to local governance. During his brief tenure as governor, Magalas faced challenges, including accusations of corruption and mismanagement of public resources, which later led to legal repercussions. Despite these controversies, he played a pivotal role in Ecrian politics during a critical period. Magalas passed away on the 14th of July, 2024 in Rio Branco, succumbing to complications from diabetes. His legacy is remembered for both his contributions to Acre's political landscape and the controversies that marked his career. In today's episode, we're diving into a chilling tale that gripped the internet with fear, but thankfully, ends on a note of relief. Recently, a harrowing rumor swept across social media platforms claiming that beloved actress Goldie Hawn had passed away. This news sent shockwaves through the entertainment community and her vast fan base, sparking an outpouring of grief and confusion. Today, July 16th, 2024, we're here to set the record straight and deliver some much needed good news. First and foremost, it's crucial to clarify that Goldie Hawn is alive and well. The rumor of her death was nothing more than a baseless hoax, one of many that unfortunately circulate online targeting celebrities. Today, we'll explore the origins of such devastating rumors and discuss their impact not only on the celebrities involved, but also on their families and fans. Additionally, we'll delve into how Goldie Hawn herself responded to hearing news of her supposed demise and how she and her family are handling the situation. It's important to remember the emotional toll these rumors can take and the broader implications they have on our understanding of news and information in the digital age. Stay tuned as we unpack these topics, ensuring our community is informed, engaged, and relieved to know that Goldie Hawn remains a vibrant part of our world.